Welcome, everyone. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Eric Jorgensen. I am the founder of Special Needs Navigator. I started Special Needs Navigator to help individuals, families, and caregivers navigate the maze of benefits, resources, and services. Today, I want to give a little introduction to the benefit that is the Children's Health Insurance Program, or CHIP, offered through Medicaid. What we're going to discuss is an overview of what CHIP is, how to qualify for CHIP, the potential cost you may have to pay even if you do qualify or your child qualifies, and how to apply. First thing to know is it's health insurance for children with low incomes or pregnant women with low incomes. As a general rule, it is going to include the follow, you know, everything that's on this list. The other services that it may or may not offer are going to depend on the state that you live in. But at a minimum, you should be getting routine checkups, your, your things like your MMR or other immunizations, you know, routine doctor visits, dental and vision care. These are all things that uh, you should be getting covered should you qualify. Now I have heard, I have talked to some people who were told by their state that they don't qualify or that their children don't qualify. And I believe in many cases, this was a mistake. So what do you need to make sure that you qualify for CHIP? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to be the, under the age of 19 or you have to be pregnant and have low income. You can't have any other insurance. So if you're covered, if you have your child covering under your health insurance, then your child would not qualify for CHIP. But if you did not have any health insurance and you made too much money to qualify for Medicaid, your child may still be eligible for CHIP. They do have to be citizens and, and or meet the immigration requirements and you have to be a resident of the state you live in. So if you just recently moved to Tennessee, you have to make sure you've met their residency requirements before you become eligible for CHIP. Typically, the income is going to be the income requirements are going to be between 170% to 400% of the federal poverty level based on the number of people in your household. This can be found online. It is a public document. You look up how many people are in your household, that'll tell you what the federal poverty limit is. And the state you live in will tell you what the limits are. Some states, it could be 200% of federal poverty level. Some states, it could be 300% of federal poverty level. It really depends on, again, depends on the state you live in. When you do qualify, you may still have to pay a deductible. The deductible is what you pay before the insurance is going to pay anything. So if you sign up for a, a, a insurance plan, and this isn't just CHIP, if you sign up for any kind of health insurance and it says the deductible is $5,000 for the year, that means the insurance company will not pay any of your bills until you've exceeded $5,000. Copayment is what you're going to pay after you've met the deductible. So you may have a deductible of $5,000 and it would say perhaps a $40 copay for office visits or a $100 copay for an emergency room visit. I'm making these numbers up, I have no idea. What that means is even if you've paid the $5,000 for the deductible and you've met your deductible, when you go to the doctor to, for a routine visit, you're still gonna have to come out of pocket for $40. Typically they're gonna bill you when you go to the doctor's office. Finally, the last thing I wanna make sure people understand is Depending on the state you live in and your income, you may have to pay a premium. The premium is what you pay to put the insurance in place in, in the first place. So to recap, premium is what you pay to get the insurance. When you sign up for the insurance, they're going to tell you it will cost this much per year or this much per month. Let's say $400 a month for health insurance premium. They may also tell you, you have a $5,000 deductible. That means even though you're paying $400 a month for health insurance, you would not get anything paid for by the insurance company until you paid $5,000 out of pocket. 
On top of that, you may have a copayment. So every time you go to the doctor's office, you will you may have to come out of pocket using the example I previously gave, $40 per doctor's visit. Something to remember, premiums, unless you are self-employed, are not tax deductible. So if you're keeping track of your medical expenses for taxes, you cannot claim the premium unless you're unless you are self-employed. However, you can and should keep track of co-payments and deductibles because unless you pay for those out of a health savings account or a FSA, flexible savings account, families, um, I don't remember what the FSA stands for. I believe it's flexible savings account. Unless you pay for it using one of those, then, the, then it should be tax deductible. As always, you would wanna to talk to your tax professional. I am not a tax professional. I am not giving you tax advice. I just want you to know what's available and what you should be thinking about. Last thing I wanna make sure you know is how to apply. You can call the 800 number here, or you can go to the health insurance marketplace and apply online. If it looks like you qualify, they're going to send your information to a state agency. The state agency is the one who will contact you about enrollment. This is, uh, again, a brief overview. I hope you find it helpful. If you would like more information or you would like to contact me, my contact information is up there. The best way to reach me is my email, erica, especially it's navigator.us. You can go to my website. I also have a blog where I post a lot of helpful content. If you have questions about something I didn't cover, please reach out. If you have topics that you would like me to cover, please tell me what those topics are. I look forward to hearing from you.